Good morning. It's Thursday, October 29th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Light of Truth, in our scripture, Psalm 43. Declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars, for you are God, my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. Sometimes when you read Scripture, it's an easy mistake to read in a bubble of isolation. That is, you see the biblical characters as if their lives are somehow different from ours. Technology and science aside, there's not a breathing human living on the planet at this moment who is any different from those who dwelt in caves or wrote on clay tablets, as opposed to iPads and PCs. King David's life was not lived in a wonderland-like rabbit hole. His ethereal, quote-unquote, aura had real rocks and streams and the danger of enemies, both human as well as ferocious bears and lions. When armies went to war, real men died. Disease took hold in pandemic waves, and the cancer of lies was just as caustic and devastating as today. And when David, just as you and I, faced those human conditions, he felt helpless and confused at times. Hence his prayer recorded in the Psalms. It was the heartfelt cry of a needy, troubled soul looking for the light of God's truth to guide him into a right course of action to deal with the evil oppressors who lied their way into places of power and were now unjustly attempting to overwhelm David's life with their schemes. Sometimes we simply imagine evil in others or are simply fooled by accusations, fabricated stories to make an evil person seem better than he is. That should be an easy call in an election year. (laughs) But sometimes evil is so great it's driven from below the surface, demonic, and evidence of the greater struggle between God and all that's unholy. That may seem surreal to the modern mind, but it's merely an evidence of something that existed long before you and me, or David, or even Adam and Eve. Before the creation of earth and the universe, there were seeds of doubt and pride, a canker ready to usurp the very throne of God. Those seeds became the fruit of rebellion, which is recorded in Isaiah's prophecy as Lucifer, God's beloved angel, thought to replace God Almighty, but was rejected, defeated, and consigned to eternity in hell for his unfaithfulness. Isaiah 14:12. How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning! You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. The seed of sin spread to Adam and Eve and multiplied in less than a full generation as one jealous son, Cain, killed his brother Abel. And it has been so ever since. To listen to the news media, politicians, and fear mongers, it's all about racism. The problem with that is an attempt to point fingers at a single outcropping of an endemic epic cause while sidestepping the long-entrenched human condition, sin. We look at what's happening in today's culture as if it's something new, or at least an outbreak of a problem about to be dealt a crusadish death blow. Racism did not start in the 1620s. It's merely an evidence of a deeper human condition that surfaces in many different ways. You cannot cure racism or any other social evil with an edict from Washington or by building more churches, bigger churches, and more entertaining, culturally fashionable churches and worship styles. 
And no politician has a legislative agenda to stem human evil. And no movement claiming their space matters or their 15 minutes of fame will make all the difference is going to stem the tide of the pandemic of sin. For that, there is only one cure, the blood of Jesus Christ. When received, this blood works in the human heart as no other force in the universe. 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. This is the light of God's truth. It's only the cleansing of the human heart by the forgiveness of God that leads to what David prayed, that God's light and truth would set him on a true course, one that leads to joy. For you today, course correction, kneel at the cross and get up with truth and light as your guide. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.